Hi, and welcome to The Great Arising. Today's topic is going to be your spirit has everything you need right now. And we're going to learn how to operate from a multidimensional life. <laughs> Does that sound confusing enough? Well, I hope it's not. I'm going to try to explain it to you. Humans were designed to be progressively productive. They're the only being that was designed to be progressively productive. Do you see animals making innovative homes? No, they're always operating from their instinct. Now, as wonderful as animals are, they just were not designed like us. We were designed in the image of the creator. And this is why the very first directive of our life is to be creative, to be operating in the image of the creator. Why? Because God uh, revealed himself first as the creator. There's a reason for that. He wants us to know that we were made in his image and therefore we are also creators. We're co-creators with God. And if we, if we realize that who we are, are creators, we're innovators, then we will progressively produce. Isn't that good news, my friends? We will, I've got to look down at my notes. We will not expect, if we think like this, we will not expect to grow old and weak and get worse over the years and less and less productive. No, we will think of exponentially increasing. Our life was designed to exponentially increase. And so my friends, if we just, if we focus on the being who we are, that will produce a doing, which is fruitful, be fruitful, multiply. It'll produce productive activity driven by the spirit, and it will cause a multiplication. It will cause a harvest. It will cause us to have what we're dreaming of. So we be, we do, and we have. And each one of those is important. It feeds into the other. And so the most important thing is to know who you are. And the most, and one of the most important things when you discover who you are is you are a spirit that has a body. You're not a body that has a spirit. You're a spirit that has a body. Jesus taught this in many ways. And if you see it this way, you will see that you have charge over physical things because you're a spirit. Everything was made by the spirit. Um, food has a spiritual nature about it. This is why when you eat nutrition, nutritious food, it actually does something to your body because all the food that God made was spoken into existence. His word has spirit and life. He speaks. I don't know how he did it, but he spoke the apple tree into existence. That apple tree carries the resonance, the sound of his voice forevermore because his voice never stops. It keeps creating. Once he set it out, it began creating. And this is what he did in the seed, in a seed form, apples, have seeds, the seeds fall to the ground, create more. It's because his word is alive and active, okay? So you are alive and active when you operate from the spirit rather than from the soul, which is the, which is the mind, will, and emotions, or from the body. The body has a voice and the body can say, hey, I'm in pain. Hey, I'm, you know, and the body operates from uh, past experience because you hold trauma in your body, you hold memories in your body. And sometimes those memories are constantly telling you who you are and who you're not. It's from the past. And so we, if we go into the spirit dimension of who we actually are one with Christ, we will, what we'll do is we will strengthen that and make that more prominent in our life. And our spirit will actually give life to the body because we're one with Holy Spirit and the spirit of God gives life to the natural body, the body that's decaying 
it gives life to the body, but we've been backwards. We've been thinking it's all about the natural realm. It's all about who we are in the natural and, and we're letting the natural realm tell us what is and what is not. And so my friends, I want to teach you today just a little bit, if I can, about multidimensional living. You already have what you're needing. You already have what you want. But the thing is, let me get my notes here because I wrote something really clever down. When you pray, because this is what we're doing, we're praying for something to come to us, right? Because there's some assignment on our life we feel like we're supposed to fulfill. We feel it's the call of God and we need something to happen for that to be fulfilled. And so when we pray, we're not looking for something to come. We're thanking him for what has already been done. And when we pray like that, we're actually operating in the spirit, not in this physical realm of not having. We're operating from the spirit realm where we have everything. We have everything that we could ever ask for or hope for in the spirit, but we want it to manifest in the physical realm. And when you become what he's already done, let me say that again, when you become what he has already done, you are going to bring what you're looking for to you, okay? When you become what he's already done, you will bring what you're looking for to you, okay? You've heard new age teachers uh, teach about the law of attraction. The Jesus actually teaches it too. <laughs> he just doesn't call it that. They are on to something that Christians have missed over time. They've missed it. Um, here, let me invite someone in here. Um, and when we operate from a place of already being who we are in Christ, we're already one with the spirit. We are affecting the physical realm. There is a realm of living that that's above this physical realm. That's why I said the body is inside the spirit, not the other way around. And we've been seeing it as though the spirit is inside the body. And if you see that, you can see why Jesus was able to take his body to heaven. You can see why Jesus was able to walk through walls because he wasn't a body. He was a spirit with a body. He could take his body to heaven and we could too, if we could grasp onto this. Okay. I want to give you a few examples. I want to, I want to uh, back up and show you something that I learned this weekend while going to the blessing of the grapes event at the new Clairvoix here in Reading. It's actually about 40 minutes away, but I want to share with you some hold on you see this picture right here is this showing up big on the screen i can't see any of you so you can give me a thumbs up um this is their chapel this is the monks okay good uh thank you anna this is the monks chapel at the new clairvoix uh winery and 70 percent of this chapel is made from stones from an original chapel in the 1100s from Spain, okay? And they wanted to build their new, uh, it's it's not really a chapel, it is, but it's it's kind of like a, a big church, you know? And um, not, not like a small chapel that you would think of. They wanted to build this to commemorate their forefathers and they wanted it to be just like the one uh, in Spain. But they only had 70, only 70 percent um, would it would only complete the building 70 percent because 30 percent of these stones were lost. What happened is this building was built in 1100s, not the one in the picture, but the one in Spain was built in the 1100s. And they started bringing all of these stones over to San Francisco and um and something happened. I don't know the whole history of it, but they were all left in San Francisco. They went, these stones went through crazy thing, crazy times. And I believe this might've been in the 1980s when they started bringing these over. 
Well, then um, the monks here at New Clairvaux, they brought them up to Reading and they started building their chapel and they didn't have enough. They knew that. But what they did is they wanted to go and find um, stones, the 30%, the remaining 30%, here it is again, um, that resonated with the stones from the 1100. So the 1100 stones, the stones from 1100 AD, had a vibrancy, had a frequency of some, it was some frequency. Okay, I don't know what it was, but they needed to find stones that had the same frequency because if they didn't have the same frequency, they would disintegrate. They would act against each other, okay? But if the stones had the same frequency, they could last another thousand years, maybe even more. I mean, these stones from the 1100s have lasted all this time, a thousand years, right? So if the stones built together, they had the same frequency, they resonated together, they would last for another thousand years is what they believed. And so isn't that interesting, friends, um, that when stones resonate together, they operate in a way that is almost eternal. Like they don't wear out. They don't disintegrate. And it all has to do with vibration resonating, resonating with one another like that. Okay. What if if we resonated with the Holy Spirit in that way, where the Holy Spirit was giving our directives and we were receiving and we were giving and receiving with the Holy Spirit in a way that was, it was like abiding. It was constant resonating with the Holy Spirit. What would that do to our bodies? How would our bodies respond? I think that one of the first tips is to think differently in that your body is inside your spirit. Because if you put your body in subjection to your spirit man, then your body is bring, taking directives from a, your life source. Your life source is the spirit. That is what gives life to everything on the planet is the spirit. A word spoken from God is alive and it's spirit. And it produces life. So what if you thought differently and you stopped focusing on the, the physical things, the physical, maybe the things that you don't have yet or the things that you need, and you started going into the spirit and thanking him that you already have it. Now, that kind of seems funny, too, for a lot of people. They're like, I just don't understand how that works. Let me. OK, so. Basically, we are living in a multidimensional reality. We are multidimensional people, okay? Because I'm going to try to explain this. <laughs> I might have to add some uh, pictures to help you guys see it. An atom is only 0.0001% matter, and it's 99% spirit. So each atom that makes up your body, that makes up your physical body here is 99% spirit energy. Okay. So what is subject to what is the, is the spirit contained by the, by the body, by the one, the 0.0001%? No, it's the other way around. The body is within spiritual energy. Can you see that? I'm going to, maybe I'll add some graphs and, and pictures so you guys can see it and it'll make sense because I feel like if you get this, your prayer life will change, your thought life will change. You'll think of everything differently. You'll actually exercise your authority differently because you are no longer subject to what's going on in the physical, what your body is telling you. Your body is being brought underneath the subjection of your spirit. And when your spirit takes control, you're mastering your body by the word and the life of God. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay. So let me just say that again. When you pray, you're not looking for something to come. You're thinking, you're thanking him for what has already been done. 
And this has to do with who you are, your identity. You know, we have we have uh, lie identities, we have my identities, and we have an identity. The, the lie identity, you can imagine what that is, a bunch of lies from your past, suffering from your past, what other people have said about you, people have gotten it wrong about you. Those are lie identities. And then we have the my identity, the one that sees ourselves separated from God. It's all about me, myself, and I. You know, that is an, an identity that will uh, lead you to wrong places. We, we've seen this in lots of people's lives and our own too. We've all had a my identity, right? But the identity is based on the I am. What did God say about you? Who did God call you? He called you. He said that you were made in his image and he put his own spirit within you, within your whole being. Okay. I don't want you to say, think of that as this tiny little spirit deep inside of your body. You can't even find it. No, within you, who are you? Your spirit, your spirit. You are more spirit than you are body. You have more spiritual energy than you have body. And if you realize this, you'll always, you'll start to think, what kind of spiritual energy am I incorporating into my life? What kind of frequency am I operating from? Am I joining up with like-minded frequencies or am I off a little bit and I'm listening to angry prophets, kill them all, send them all to hell. They will disintegrate your spiritual energy. They will, they will chip away at your body, your, your, your physical body. If you keep listening to those kinds of people that are not of the same spirit of God. Remember when the, when the disciples said, Hey, call down fire from hell and just wipe them out. Jesus, he goes, you don't know what spirit you are of. And so a lot of people justify that because of Elijah, right? We're not living in those days. We're living in the days of grace. We are living in the days of the Holy Spirit being poured out on the earth. We cannot operate from this old mentality of just kill them. Come on, because if you do, it'll be killing your own body. This is why you want to join up with people that are operating at the same frequency or they're calling you up, okay? That doesn't mean that you don't pay attention to those that are operating at low frequency levels, which I would call that low acknowledgement of what Jesus has done for them, okay? They're not operate, they're not manifesting the kingdom of God in their life quite as much as you. We don't want to put ourselves on a pedestal or anything like that. We want to bring those people up but we don't want their energy to affect ours. It's very important that you stay strong in the spirit, friends, for them, okay? It's very important that you strengthen yourself in the Lord and hang out with the people that are operating with the spirit of God. Otherwise, just like the monks knew that their building would not last if they didn't get stones that had the same frequency as the stones from the 1100 ad uh chapel i mean imagine I, I i was talking to one of the uh monks when we were there i said your songs and your prayers have been remembered by all of these stones imagine the i i, I just know they've absorbed the spiritual energy of god's word as it came out of their mouth as they were singing all the songs back in the 1100s this, this group of monks, they were the ones that housed the Templars. Imagine, like this is their, their, their legacy. They would, they would take care of the Templar Knights. They have so much um, history. And then I found out from one of the monks that he would go up and down the grapevines and pray over them because they couldn't get their organic um, uh, certification because there were chemicals in the soil and they just couldn't get certified. And he would go up and down these aisles, these, these rows of, of grapes, and he would pray the purity of God over the grapes and in the soil. And he just started speaking life into the soil. And eventually they got their organic certification 
in in this one group of grapes that they were uh, really wanting. Their, their wine, I just have to stop and say this, their wine is the best wine I've ever tasted in my entire life. I am not a wine snob, but I, it's amazing when I tasted their wines, every single wine I love, I love the whites. I love the rosés. I love the, um, the Cabernets. I love, I've never said that about any wine. And then I went into their tasting room and they have hundreds and hundreds of gold medals hanging on all of these, these wine bottles that they've made over the years. And I don't know if any other winery can uh, say that. And I know it's because they believe that they're doing something to these grapes. They're, they're singing over them. They're praying over them. See, this is the spiritual energy that they are cultivating and they're being rewarded for it on the earth in, in this earthly realm. This is what our life was supposed to be like. We're supposed to be exponentially increasing. We're supposed to be the most productive people on the earth, not because we're striving harder or working harder, because we're operating from the spirit and not from the limited soul or the limited body. Isn't that good? That's This is good news because all it is, it's, it's a shifting. It's a shifting of acknowledging that you're a spirit and you have a body. And your body needs to be in subjection to your spirit so it can receive life. It can receive its purpose. It can receive energy, an energy force field of life. Same from same as the Holy Spirit, because you and Holy Spirit are one. And the more and more you talk to your brain and your soul and you you start talking to yourself and say, okay, we're going to expand today. This is going to be hard. It's probably going to be a little painful. It's going to be really uncomfortable because you've not done this before, but we're going to do it. We're going to expand and we are going to go into the spirit. We're going to give credit to the spirit. We're going to get our spirit off the discount rack of life. We're going to acknowledge it and let it expand us so that we can be like Christ. We can do the same things that he did. That's what he's hoping. He's hoping that the kingdom of heaven will be coming out from outside of us. He doesn't want the kingdom of heaven to be this little seed on the inside of you. He said, work out your salvation. What is your salvation? It's life. It's health. It's well-being. It's all of the things that you find in the kingdom of God. It's not just a ticket to get you to heaven one day. Heaven is not a place. It's a realm. It's a governing system of God. And you have access to that realm right now. You don't have to wait one day to get there. You're not going somewhere. You're already there right now. Jesus said you are, you <laughs> have been seated in heavenly places and you have every spiritual blessing. How can this really work? I want to give you another visual to help you kind of see it. Okay, hold on. Um, let me get to my share screen. Um, I, okay, are you seeing that now big? Yes, okay. So this is how we operate, most of us on this timeline of past, present, and future. And it's this linear timeline. And, and we were not meant to operate like this because if we're operating like this, what happens is most people are living in the past or the future. And if you are living in the past or the future, you're dead in the present. Do you see? You see that? And this is how we think too. We're like, well, one day when we get to heaven or when a loved one dies, oh, we'll see them one day. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Like we're, we're, it's like we're, we are prisoners of this timeline in this realm, but God made us multidimensional beings. I'm going to show you the next slide. I hope. Yes. This is how it's supposed to be. Turn the timeline upside right like this. If this is the timeline, which is multidimensional, we are we can operate in any time. I know that's going to stretch you a little bit, friends, but just hang on with me. And don't expect yourself to understand it all at once. Ask the Lord about it. The Holy Spirit will teach you about it. 
if this is the case that we were we were designed to be multidimensional, we have the past, the future, and the present right now. Being present means that we can we can live in all three right now. There is no time, right? In the spirit. Now that seems so it seems so ridiculous or new agey in a way, but this is what the Bible describes. This is why Paul could say, you have been seated with Christ. You're already there right now. And if it's true that we are a spirit that has a body, like our body is an expression of our spirit, man. If our, if we are a spirit, then we can be at two places at once. If we're in Christ, then we can be here and there. And we can go there whenever we want to intentionally focus on that reality. Whenever we want to, we can do that. Now, this is going to take intentional doing on your part to actually expand your uh, the eyes of your imagination, to expand your experience, your current experience. We need to expand our thinking. We need our brains to get caught up with our spirit. And sometimes we're underneath what we already know. And we need to get out of that into the spirit and tell our brains what's true. Because our brain's operating on the past. It's operating on future dreams that are never going to happen if you operate like that. You're just dreaming. It's just an, it's just, it's never going to manifest. And so if you just take that timeline and you go like this and you go, oh, no, 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 because I'm in Christ, I have the future, I have the past, I'm living in the present. It's all one. It's all one. There is no linear time in Christ. Everything is right now, right now. The more and more you operate in the presence of God, he's present with you now. The more you do that, you'll see future things coming into manifestation in your present life. You'll see the past changing. Now, I know this person personally. He did not have one happy childhood memory that he could remember because he was severely abused. He was, um, everything about him was darkened. His conscious was, his consciousness was darkened by this abuse. It was almost like he couldn't even see the sun anymore. He couldn't see the beauty of a flower. It's like he had been so darkened by the abuse and by the spiritual energy that he grew up with and, um, and his family that adopted him out of that, they took him to many places. They took him all over the world traveling and they gave him a really good childhood, but he didn't experience it because he was living in darkness. And do you want to know a miracle? I heard that he, even though he did not enjoy one of those family vacations that he went on now as an adult, as a redeemed adult, um, renewed in his mind and healed of all of his childhood wounds. He thinks of all those, those vacations as if they were so fun. And I know his mother, his mother thought it's so sad that he has no good childhood memories. It's like his whole childhood was robbed from him. Even after his adoption, his childhood was robbed from him because he couldn't enjoy life. But now as an adult, as a redeemed person, someone who was healed, he looks back and God, he's living, he's multidimensional. His past was redeemed and he actually has awesome memories of all of those family vacations. It's almost unbelievable, but this is what God wants to do for us is he wants to reconcile all things to himself, all things. He wants to reconcile every one of your memories to himself. So you don't even remember the bad that happened to you and your body lets go of that memory and that trauma. A lot of times pain in the body is a traumatic memory and your body is holding on to it. It's, it's 
it's reacting to the wrong vibration. Remember the stones. There's So you've got your body who was given this bad frequency, spiritual energy, and it's crying out, help me, save me. And that's what's happening in a lot of people's bodies is their frequency, the spiritual energy around them, their body has given them the spiritual energy of their life. And it's a lie. And so if we just, if we tune in and we recalibrate, no, you know what? I love my body. So my spirit man is taking charge today because I love this body. God gave it to me. It's a temple. I, I can do things in this realm with it and it deserves the best food. And it. I'm going to treat my body the way God would treat it. And I am a spirit and I own the body with Holy Spirit. And I am going to, I'm going to reconcile every bad memory and everything in the body that the body is holding on to. And I'm going to reconcile it to God as if the past, the bad past never happened. It is possible, my friends. I've seen it happen in so many people's lives. It's happened to me in my life. I didn't know that childhood trauma could, could direct my life as badly as it did, but it did. Oh, friends. Okay. You are powerful. Okay. All dimensions are operating at the same time, all dimensions. And when you come into a calibration with the spirit of God, you have not only direct access to the spirit of God, but now you have a connection to be able to change what's happening in the physical realm. You have uh, authority, you have a spiritual energy to uh, change the vibration. Like we could probably change the vibration of stones if we wanted to. I'm just, I'm just thinking like, because when, when our voice sounds like the father's voice, the stones respond, the stones recognize the sound of their creator. And when the sound of the creator comes in, the stones can praise him because they're on the same frequency, right? All of creation responds to the frequency of God. And this is why it's so important to expand your spirit man. Acknowledge your spirit man. Give your spirit man first place. Don't look at death anymore the way that you used to. Death is a passing on to a to a, an, an acknowledgement. Oh, I'm a spirit and I had a body. Now I want so badly friends one day for all of us to be so spiritually minded and expanded to um, be just like Christ that we can take our body to heaven with us and we won't see death or decay. I, I pray that that happens one day. That might seem really crazy to you and you might think I'm really weird, but I think you're weird. Okay, so <laughs> practice presence. Be conscious of it. Practice presence. See, this is the thing. When you practice presence, being present yourself, and, the, and you consciously make yourself aware of the presence of God, what happens is a recalibration starts to happen and you start to see it. The spiritual energy around you changes and that spiritual energy um, um, starts to affect everything around you and it draws what you're needing for your assignment to you. You no longer have to struggle and strive for it and chase it and go after it, you just get to walk in communion with the Lord and make it happen with him. That doesn't take your responsibility away to do. Because God said in the beginning, he said, um, be fruitful and multiply and take dominion, subdue the earth. There's a doing that happens when we know who we are. When we know of our spiritual, who we are in the spirit, we will do differently. It'll be so much easier too, because things will be all aligned for us. The spirit will finally be in alignment with God and our bodies will be subject to our spirit, man, instead of the other way around where our bodies are holding back our spirit, man from doing what we should be doing on the earth. Okay. Um, 
Okay, we move through the dimensions according to frequencies beyond our senses. So our senses are telling us things that are not necessarily true. So this is why you need to uh, train your senses. Okay, um, we have five senses in the physical, but there's so many more senses, you know, and what I mean by that is, you could be walking um, on a trail. This happened to me one time I was walking on a trail and uh, all alone. And I felt like somebody was watching me and I felt like somebody was following me. Nobody was, I looked around, there was nobody there, but this feeling just followed me like I was being watched. And it, it actually was a mountain lion and um, the mountain lion. Once I acknowledged that God was with me and um, at first I was so afraid, I was full of fear because the whole time I was walking on this trail, I sensed it. That's a sense that you can have. You can sense that things are around you. Okay. And what was happening is I was walking into danger. The, the mountain lion was not following me or stalking me. I was walking towards it and I was getting closer and closer. And I finally sat down on a park bench and I just started praying to the Lord because I felt the fear and I got rid of the fear. And I was like, yeah, you're right, God, I have nothing to fear and I started calibrating with him. I started uh, getting into his frequency, acknowledging he's with me. I'm powerful. I'm in him. I'm protected in him. And fear left. And once fear left, I got up off the park bench and I walked towards the, the edge of this little like hill that went almost straight down. And this mountain lion got up. <laughs> I was like, oh. There was something that was to be afraid of that's right here. It got up and it ran away from me. See, this is the thing. When you are resonating with the frequency of God, things that want to hurt you can't. They can't penetrate your energy that your energy field, your your spirit. They can't they can't see you perhaps or they they get afraid of you. Okay. See, you're walking in the power of God when you acknowledge him every time you intentionally put your focus on him is in you, with you, on you, around you. He's with you that, I mean, every single time you make yourself aware you're being present. And when you're being present, you're making changes around you. Your spirit is expanding its field. If you want to know, this is cool. If you want to know where you are on your, in your senses, like training your senses to be subject to the spirit, just go spend some time with some horses. Okay. Go to a horse ranch and talk to someone who knows what they're doing with horses. They can teach you some things. Horses are the most sensitive animal besides the dolphin. Dolphins and horses are the most sensitive animals. They can sense your spiritual energy from, um, I don't know how far away it is for a horse, but it's pretty far away. Um, and I don't know for a dolphin, but I know that both, both of them are so sensitive. They can feel your mood and your energy, your frequency from far away. And so just take the horse by the reins and see how the horse reacts and responds to you. Because if it pulls away and it doesn't want it to follow you, it's because you aren't confident in your, um, your dominion, like your dominionism, your authority, your place in the spiritual realm. They know when you're operating from fear and they don't want to be with you. Because why? They're hurting and they're, they're an animal that joins up to um, a leader. And this is why horses, if they're not trained by man and they're not trained by a good, a good man, they can never reach the, the capacity of their destiny because God created them to partner with man and to serve man. And they, and he made them, God made horses to be able to feel you. So when you're riding a horse, it can feel your emotions. And if you're scared, they get scared because they trust that, you know, things they trust. Oh, this must be a, this must be a bad place to run into. 
But if you're confident, the horse feels confident and it will ride. It will do everything you tell it to do. It'll, it'll, it'll join up with you in frequency. And, and it's a powerful partnership. So if you ever want to know where you are in your confidence level, just go and try to lead a horse and see what happens. See how they respond to you. Um, not all horses have been trained very well by humans. Um, so I wouldn't try it with any horse, but any horse that's been trained by a good person will be able to tell you what your senses, how, what your senses are on a frequency level by how they respond to you. Anyways, the Bible says to train your senses. Why? Because you want your senses to be subject to the spirit because your senses are going to take you places that you can't go by being sensitive to the world, the world system. You need to be sensitive to the spirit. You need everything to join up with the spirit. Okay. Because your spirit has a body. <laughs> it has a body of senses, right? And so we want to train our senses to partner or to serve us the way that they were meant to serve us. They're not the guide. They're not the leader. They're meant to serve us. And so it, daily, you can, you can change your frequency in your body and actually begin to, to acquire health in it or um, uh, see a miracle healings in your body just by the wet just by simply joining up with the spirit of god every day like intentionally joining up with him intentionally bringing your frequency to his frequency just resonating with him remember uh sound waves they have these these um these humps like this right and when we tune up with uh, let's just say we have a flute and a violin. When they tune to the same note, the the wave becomes flat. But when they're out of tune, it's like this, it's disheveled, right? And you can feel this wave. You can feel the, the disruption. This is what it's like when we are tuning up with God. We want to know, how are you feeling? What do you feel, God? I can tell you one thing, God is happy. He sees the plans of the enemy and he's laughing because his plan is, is coming in and all of that will be demolished. Not people, but the plan of the enemy. The people that have a my identity or a lie identity, they're all getting, they're all, the spirit of God is going to be poured out on them. <laughs> be patient, be patient with people. God loves the whole world. He wants everyone to be saved. I think he might get his desire. I don't know, because we do have a say, right? But but just be, be um, hopeful for people. And you will, if you're hopeful for the worst sinner in the world, you will carry the right spiritual energy around with you. And you will attract the things of the kingdom. Okay, you never have to want for anything when you are operating in the presence of the Lord, my friends, hmm. you were designed with a God frequency. You can only flourish by coherence with God every day, intentionally join up with his spiritual energy, join up with 100% truth. Tell your brain what to think. Oh, that's a lie. You're not going to think about that today. You're going to think about the truth. And you're going to begin to release the right chemicals to your body so that your body can be healed. Jesus came to recalibrate us, to invite us to join up, to invite us to operate at the same frequency as him so that we can be just like those stones from 1100. We can last. We will have lasting effect. We will exceedingly exponentially increase as we get older we won't get weaker and weaker one day we're just gonna go oh, i'm ready for heaven heaven the place and we'll be just as energetic as we were when we were 20 this is god's hope that you would be as strong and as energetic as you were in your 20s 
I can find the proof of it all the way through the Bible. I really can. And you can too. Just look for it. Look for the truth of God. Let's see. Is there something else I want to share before I go off? Let me just see. Um, today should be better than yesterday. Yes. Because you are designed for perpetual increase. So tomorrow, I know we're living on a different timeline, the one that goes straight up and down, but you're being prepared and strengthened for tomorrow right now. So it, expect yourself to get better every day. Expect your senses to be stronger every day. Expect your confidence level to grow every single day. Expect that you're going to see God in tomorrow and it's going to be, you're going to, you're going to meet God in a way that you've never met him before. Why? Because it's a new day, but expect growth, expect exponential growth every single day, just by joining up with God's frequency, his love. It's his love zone. So this, this week, I want, I want to encourage you friends to see yourself as a spirit, see yourself as a spirit who has a body, see how that changes your week, see how it changes your workflow and, and, and see how it upgrades the energy of your body, the frequency of your body, how you're operating frequently, uh, in frequency notice, pay attention to the energy level of your body and just go, Oh, that's a little bit low right now. And I don't mean like whether you're tired or you're, um, you're fully awake. I mean, learn to feel the energy field of God, you know, joy, peace. What does righteousness feel like? I mean, we know what pain feels like, right? We know what loneliness feels like. We know what trauma feels like. What does it, what does the kingdom feel like? So we're going to train our senses to look for that feeling, to feel that feeling. We're going to, and, and, and this is the thing, when you see yourself as a spirit being that has a body, you're in the right, you're in the right mindset to bring about miracles in your body. See yourself as a bot or as a spirit that has a body, a spirit that has a soul and let your spirit renew those other two parts of you, renew your mind, your will, your emotions, renew your body, tell your body a different story. Oh no, you, you know, cancer, that frequency, we don't operate from that frequency anymore. We're, we're operating from life. We're operating from the life frequency. <laughs> Come on. Oh my goodness. This, I believe, is how the spirit can give life to the body. Just like it says in Romans 8, the spirit gives life to the mortal flesh. It's not the other way around. Be focused on the spirit so that your body will manifest what you have in spirit. All right, my friends, I love you. I pray for you all the time. I hope you feel that. Um, I pray that this week will be a different experience for you, a stronger, a more coherent experience, coherent with the heartbeat of God. All right. I love you and have a great week. You can buy me coffee by clicking on that button down below. Thank you so much for the coffee. I had a friend send me like a hundred coffees or so. It was so nice. She's the best person, best friend ever. Thank you so much to that person. You know who you are. All right. I love you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.